Hello again. Uh, this coming Sunday is the second Sunday in Advent, uh, and there is one announcement. This coming Tuesday, Tuesday the 8th, uh, will be uh, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. There will be two, church, two uh, celebrations of the Eucharist uh, in the Church, one at noon and one at 6 p.m. on that Tuesday, uh, December 8th. So if you can join us, uh, please do so. Thanks. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from the second letter of Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the law one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay His promise, as some regard delay, but He is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and when, and then the heavens will pass away, with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be, conducting yourself in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God? because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blameless before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God. God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him 
and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Natasha, my wife, and I um, have had many occasions uh, over the course of our marriage of seeing where we are now and um, you know how happy we are with our three, almost four kids and their unique personalities and really being in no small way content with how life has been. And then we'll begin to reflect on everything that it took to bring us here. Um, and, and not just the decisions that we made, but all the things in the background that had to have happened. Um, you know, we met at a coffee shop where I was working and she was working. If neither of us had been working there, we never would have met. Uh, if I hadn't landed in that town because of college, we wouldn't have met, if, you know, and so on and so on. Why we ended up in Nashville when we did. Um, and all of these things, you know, had to be this way in order for us to have this moment that we're having of, of saying, this is good. And in some sense, and this is, is real and this is what God wants for us. Um, so not something that's just accidental, but there's a, a purposefulness working through our lives, um, that we're not fully accountable for, that we, um, that we don't have control over and that can feel a little scary sometimes, you know, at just how close it was to, to being completely different. Um, and, and so I'm thinking about these readings last week, we talked a lot about the importance of attending to the present moment where God is now, but there's also uh, something important about being able to look over our stories and trace that thread back through everything and to find that God had always been there and that God was was present in things that we couldn't see at the time but now can see a sort of magnifying who God is um, and just how amazing and trustworthy God is even when you know attentiveness to the present moment won't give us access to that mm -hmm. we only see it in memory or in story or in reflection and it is exactly like in uh, the letter of St. Peter <clears throat> said thousand day or thousand years in God is like one day so it's, it's like God is over all and then at the second Sunday of Advent we looking into the story of John the Baptist probably many people at that time won't see like Jesus as <laughs> at that time like it's a one but looking back and see the same story of John the Baptist be fulfill the prophecy from the from prophet Isaiah, the one the voice in the desert that cry now. So probably like at that moment they, they did not kinda of like see John the Baptist as the one that like set the way for the true Messiah that come later. So You think so you think they see they probably see him as as the one. As the one, the yes. One. Mm -hmm. right. I mean yeah. he's doing all the baptizing and mm -hmm. and he has I think a pretty good thing going there, right? Right. Yeah. Pretty right. good ministry going. <laughs> Everyone's coming to him, and um, um, interesting that he would say, though, that uh, you know, even in the ministry, middle of this really um, successful ministry, that someone's coming after me who's greater than I am, yeah. and uh, I'm not worthy even to untie his sandals, and he will do something really special, mm. basically, you know. Uh, something that I can't do. Um, um. So I think that's the that's a reason. Like that's for the second Sunday. Like you you mentioned, like last week we've been called to like getting be watchful for the present moment, and now it is like calling us back into the the past. Like what we've been hearing those. 
no those call no warning like from the people around us like giving us the sign that God already like calling us all the way. It's just like something something like uh, the second reading said like it's not delay. <laughs> God keep that promise, the promise from last week that we heard, all heard that like He be with you and He will keep you and yeah. this is not delay. He's be there all the time. This is like God's which you, is patient with you. <laughs> which you can't see, which no. right? I mean, right. So God is, is present. Uh-huh. Uh, and it is as John was saying, only kind of in retrospect that you see kind of the guiding hand of God along the way. Mm-hmm. I think you said something earlier. So you said that we, um, I forget how you put it, about God and, and, uh, and, and through someone else, that um, in order to know God, we, we do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. I think I, think I said that um, you know, in order to tell the story of God, you have to begin with That's other a, people. Right, right. Uh, so, you know, in, in Mark's Gospel, which is probably the first Gospel to be, written and disseminated, at least to the four we have, you know, Mark begins his good news of Jesus Christ with not Jesus, with, with John the Baptist, mm-hmm. who in his mouth are put the words of the prophets who went before him. So in order to tell the story of God and Jesus, you have to tell the whole story of Israel, you know, to, to see God's handiwork and how, how everything has, has moved to this moment uh, but then ripples outward from it. And I think the imagery we get in the first reading is is indicative of that in history, but also in our own lives. You know, the sort of gradual changing of the landscape, mountains being leveled, valleys being filled in. Um, and at least my sense of it is, this is not something that's happening overnight. Right. This is right. the gradual terraforming right. of, of a, hab- a, you know, a habitable planet. Um, and over the course of our own lives, I think we can see as we look back the hand of God in, you know, mountains that were too high are gradually shaped by weather and the elements and brought low and the things that the empty places are eventually filled in. The barren places are fertile and the, the mucky swampy stuff where there's too much life, maybe they're pruned a little bit. Um, but we very rarely experience this happening. As, as it is, and it's probably good because it'd be very disturbing to, to feel that it's over the course of a life, maybe even generations, that we, we see that gradual effect. Um, and I think sometimes we can get impatient and say, well, I wish God would just come right now and, and, you know, and be God at us. But I remember uh, as, a, as a freshman, I think I've told this story before too, since there are a few stories I have not told twice. <laughs> um, but I remember I, I was really unhappy as a freshman. Um, it, it was in a strange place. And it, 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 you know, it, was, it was always kind of weird. And I can remember going into this, into St. Mary's Church, which was uh, just on the next block from my, my college. And, and uh, I had run early that morning and, and there was a seven o'clock mass. Uh, I went in in my running clothes and knelt in the back of the church. And uh, it's a big church, um, Dominican church, Dominican community. Uh, and I remember praying, I just want to be happy. Mm. I, said, I just want to be happy. And, uh, and years passed. And, and, I, you know, it, and it's only, again, in looking back that, that I see that all was fulfilled. Huh. You know, I mean, you know, uh, yeah. And, and, and I, there, were, there were so many things, so many decisions that I had to make along the way, which were pretty frightening, you know, in one way or another. And, um, but from this perspective, from this point, looking back, I can see, as you were saying, mm. um, this, um, this road that, that has been made, you know, where, where, where high points were, were, were lowered so that I could get across them, and low points were raised so that I could get across them. Um, over the course of what's it been forty yeah. years now? Yeah. And I think I mean that's a really moving story for a number of reasons. But one of them is that it, you know, when we truly pray in a moment of true prayer, it's where we 
you know, our desires are aligned with what God wants for us. And, and at least in that moment, there's a kind of mutual recognition. But what moves me about this story is that, you know, God is so trustworthy that God will go on answering that prayer even after we've forgotten that we prayed right, it. Right, right, because, right. because it wasn't even us yes, that convinced right. God to do this. Right. It was God meeting us and wanting something in us so badly for right. ourselves that we can't help but give voice to it. And so, you know, whether or not you remembered that you prayed that or even were actively like, well, I prayed to be happy, now I have to work at happiness. Right. <laughs> God heard that prayer of that freshman and continued to be faithful to it. Um, you know, how many things in the world happen because someone prays something they then forget about, but God doesn't. Uh, yeah, faithfully fulfill it. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think that's, that's, a, that's a point uh, and, and the virtue that like, we, we need to learn from that. God is patient for us to return and as the, the mountain be level and the valley be filled up, we too have been called to be patient. Mm-hmm. And patient doesn't mean that you just like sit there and waiting for for God, but we also need to work and however waiting patiently for the result. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's not you cannot see it now, but like right, right. a couple of years later, right. forty years, later. forty years later, <laughs> you have that fruit. Yeah. And and uh, as a responsory song again, Lord. Let us see your kindness and grant us your salvation. So that's a good prayer mm-hmm. as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Maybe we forgot in it and God is still fulfilling it. Now let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And And with your spirit. spirit. May God bless you, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace.